My main interest is in sculpture and fibers. As you can see, all of the objects we have here are three-dimensional objects. So that is something that is of interest to me, creating objects that live in the third dimension, that live in space. But then also, um, some of them have the fiber element very present, and then some others not so much, but still there's like a softness in the material. I am a sculptor, but I don't make sculptures out of stone or marble or bronze. I make them out of soft materials that turn hard. And I really love that. I love that challenge. I love the experimentation of the different materials and where they can lead me to. So I was talking to some students earlier and they were asking me how I came about to make this piece. And it was a long process and this piece has been shown in very different places and it has been shown in different arrangements. So I started out with these sections that are kind of four feet tall. You can kind of see them, right? This would be a section that would stop like right here. This is a section and stops right here. As all good artists, we always are short on material. So I personally always accept donations. So our chemistry department was renovating their building and there were all these glass things, glassware everywhere. They were not gonna use it anymore. So they asked me if I wanted a donation. I said, yes, of course, I always want donations. <laughs> so I collected these glass rods and I had them in my studio hanging from the ceiling for the longest time and I didn't really know what to do because they were so beautiful to me. I looked at them and they, the way the light reflected on them was really beautiful. I couldn't do anything with them uh, for the longest time until I had a sabbatical. So I started putting these uh, pieces of fibers around them and just crochet them. And the practice of crochet is something that is repeated on that piece over there and this piece. And it's something I learned from my grandmother and it's a way to legitimize women's work and uh, talk about feminism. And also, I want to make the practice of crocheting go into the art world with a capital A. After doing the crocheting with the fibers, I looked at these pieces like again for a very long time and they kind of felt empty, like they needed some flesh around it. So I just decided to put this uh, spray foam on them. And I think I had seen some other artists do that on a painting. So I thought, oh, let's try it out. So these were pretty much the first ones, the ones where you can still see the glass rod. And the first time I exhibited this piece, it was just these four feet segments and that was it. But then when I saw it displayed, that was in Buffalo, New York, um, I had the idea that it would be really cool to see them go from the ceiling to the floor. So I made them longer and longer and more and more in different colors. So this is what I ended up with. Um, another conceptual connection that we can have with this is I kind of want them, wanted them to look like the inside of a body, mainly because um, I was going through pregnancy. I was so focused about feeling horrible that I couldn't do anything drawing a throat exploding, that it was just about that. And then with time I realized it's also about installation art, it's about how to activate the space, it is how these things go from the ceiling to the floor and different spaces house it differently because they have different heights of ceilings. It's also about women's work because you have the crocheting, so that's something that I didn't think about in the past at all. I wanted them to resemble organs from the beginning on not completely like an organ, but kind of have a sense like an organ. So that was something that was very important at the beginning. Now maybe it's not that important anymore because they have become kind of more autonomous. So yes, the way an artist understands their work is also developing and changing. The title of this piece is um, The You and the I, which is taken from Brazilian artist Ligia Clark. She had a piece that was titled The I and the You, so the other way around. And it was about relationships with people, right? How do you communicate with people or how do you touch people? How do you, uh, how that she created these sensorial objects that would pass from person to person. So it's a reference to that um, artist that worked in the 60s. We have uh, two other pieces. That piece over there is titled Limbs. It's made out of crocheted copper wire, again, trying to make structural something that usually would not be structural. So I was thinking about uh, trees and uh, how our relationship with nature has become kind of sometimes not ideal. And I was thinking about branches and limbs and I broke my leg at some point so I didn't have like all my 
legs being totally functioning, so it was like a reflection of that. And the newest piece is over here, the one with the jeans and the air duct. Again, it's sculptural and there are uh, fibers involved in that. My intention was that they would connect with the structure as well, with the architecture of the space. So I have the one on the floor, it just connects in and out of itself, and then we have the circle that is like the shape of the Uruboros or whatever you want to call it, right? And then the other two are really kind of trying to connect with the wall. I think as an artist, the, the, the notion of time is very interesting, right? And I feel for students, because you guys have to come up with projects every two, three weeks, four weeks at the most, right? Um, this piece I started 10 years ago. <laughs> so when I considered it finished, it was in 2015 and I started 2010. So it really took me a while to develop it, to understand what I wanted it to become and to make it. I think also in the education system, sometimes we are a little unfair with our students, especially in the place where I teach. We always tell our students ideas are super important, right? Come up with your idea and then we're gonna see how you make it. But being a practicing artist, I don't know if that is usually the way it goes. Like for me, it goes more, I discover a material, I am curious about how I put these two things together, what happens. And then the meaning gets built like later on as I go. Sometimes it takes me some time to come up with a meaning. Sometimes I need to see the piece finished and then I'm like, oh yeah, this is what this piece is about. I know that you guys saw that on the table there's a writing by my colleague Joyce Berling. She's an art historian at Denison. And um, she came to my studio and talked with me about my newest body of work. And I kind of knew what the work was about, kind of. <laughs> But then she wrote about it and I was like, yeah, you are putting this into words really well, right? So I do think that as artists, we sometimes um, need to work with images, forms, shapes, lines, volumes, colors, and that communication, it's without any doubt, it is a communication, but sometimes it's not such a direct communication as language, right? Sometimes we are interested in other elements like how ambiguous can it be? Uh, how can I send a message that is not completely direct? So there are many different layers that go into that. The way I see art or I practice art, I don't think there's a correct way of interpreting it. Yeah, I think there is many different ways and I think I feel that I have accomplished something if there's many readings to my art. If it can touch many people in different ways, I think I have accomplished something. I come from a specific background, other people come from other backgrounds, right? So I think it's important to be able to, um, be able to speak across differences with art.